pay what you vowed. Uh, keep your oath that's gone out of your lips. If you make a vow, now some people make a vow to pay a certain offering. Now we don't really, we don't do this in our church. You know, and I'm not saying that I'm against those who do it, okay? But the reason that it always bothered me, who's ever been to a church where they had like a, a faith promise, missions, where you like promise, pay a certain amount? It always bothered me. And it really bothered me a lot because this is what would happen. They would hand out cards and people would promise that they were going to give a certain offering throughout the course of the year. Like, I'm going to give, you know, uh, 20 bucks a week to the missionaries. Or I'm going to give 40 bucks a week to missions. And they would fill out this promise card and put it in. And then throughout the year in the bulletin, there would be two numbers. The promise and what was actually coming in. Well, the promise was always bigger than what actually came in. And they would get up and say, wow, this is great. We had 75% of what was promised come in. And I, like, I took it really seriously. This is me like as a teenager. And I'm just like, these people have broken a vow to God, like God's wrath. And I was thinking of Ananias and Sapphira. Remember, Ananias and Sapphira promised that they were going to give a certain amount of money in Acts 5. They promised they were going to give this money. And then they lied and said, oh yeah, we gave it all, but they only gave part of what they promised. And they fell over dead. And I read that story and I was like, wow, you know, God. And it wasn't that, they, and he even told them. Peter even said to him, he said, look, you didn't even have to give any of it to God. He said, when, it, when you sold it, it was in your own power. The money belonged to you. You didn't have to give it to church. But why did you lie to God? And that's when they died. And I mean, they carried them out. And they were dead. And it was a big, you know, they were scared. And everybody else in the church was scared. So I was scared. Even a couple thousand years later, you know, when people aren't paying what they vowed, it was like, man, they promised this. And it really, and I just thought to myself, you know what? I would rather just not even, if that's how people are going to be, I don't even want to get God's wrath upon the people in my church, so I'm not even going to do the faith promise. Because I'm afraid people will promise and they won't pay it. And I don't want to bring God's wrath upon people. You know what I mean? That's right. I mean, it just made me nervous, the whole thing. I remember I went to a church and I had made my faith promise. And I was, I was poor whenever I first got married. And, and even for many years after I got married, I started out really poor. I mean, we're really poor. We never went out to eat. I mean, my wife's grocery allowance was 40 bucks for years. 40 bucks a week, you know, to feed us. And, I mean, to feed the whole family, you know. And so it was tough, you know, to get by. We lived, I mean, when we had two kids, we were living in a one-bedroom apartment. You know what I mean? We, we started out at the bottom, you know, and, and we, we scraped by. You know, we were happy, and, and, you know, we were happy with what God had given us. But, you know, we were poor. And I remember, you know, I moved away. I moved across the country. And I was living in Sacramento, California, and when I moved away, you know, I had made the faith promise. Because, you know, everybody in the church made this promise, you know. And I took it real seriously, you know. Like, even if I was sick, I, like, dragged myself out of bed and just, like, brought the money down and just, like, <laughs> dropped it off and went home. Even if I was sick as a dog. But, basically, when I moved out of Sacramento, I still owed, like, six months, you know, because I had made this faith promise, like, six months ago. <laughs> To give this much per week or whatever. And so it was like, there's six months left on this thing and I'm moving out of Sacramento. And so I literally, I just paid it off. I mean, I added up how many more weeks there were left and I, and it was not easy. I had to sell a bunch of stuff to do it. We, so we had a big garage sale, sold stuff, and I basically paid off that part that I still owed. Now, I didn't have to make that promise, right? Did God force me to make that promise? No. But, and turn to Malachi chapter 3 if you would. God didn't force me to make that promise, but you know what? Since I did make that promise, I wanted to make sure that I kept that promise. And so I paid it off. I sold some stuff, and I paid off. It was a big, it was a substantial amount of money. It hurt. But you know what? I paid it off. Because I was just afraid to even leave town. Because it was like, well, you know, you can mail it back or whatever. I was like, I don't know, you know, I don't want that hanging over my head. I'm just like, I'm just going to pay it now and just be done with it. You know, because I, you know, I don't know what my job situation is going to be over there. So, I mean, I just sold stuff and paid it off. Look, nobody's forcing you to make any vows. You know, but when you make a vow, take it seriously. Pay it off, especially when it's vowing to God. You know, you should make, you should keep your vows that you make unto other people too. By the way, you know, if you make promises to other people, but if you make a promise to God, boy, you better pay that vow.